coming to you again from not so sunny Mount Faber. Um, it's still raining and no it's not been raining all week if you've seen my other videos. I'm just being a little bit clever with my time and cutting some of these videos in the same session. But it does rain a lot in Singapore. Today I wanted to talk to you about cognitive load. Cognitive load theory was first proposed by John Sweller I think in 1988 and this speaks to the work that working memory does. So you remember in the learning pipeline we've got the idea of capturing the sensory input through the agency of attention, passes that into working memory, the working memory does its work and then passes that ultimately, maybe after many repetitions, into long-term memory in the hippocampus. Now working memory and the work it does according to this theory has three chunks of activity and it's all about making sense if you like of the input the inbound information and this is why it links to the making sense making meaning and making impact model that I'm talking about and during making sense there are three things that load the working memory and if you see this image you'll get a sense that working memory is very limited and it's very easy to overfill uh, this coffee cup metaphor gives you that sense that once your working memory is full you can't do much more so cognitive load talks about three demands on working memory and the first of those is intrinsic the intrinsic load that's present and that's related to making sense of the idea the content the theory the formula uh, a set of instructions new language it's the inherent work involved in trying to make sense and this is heavily impacted by the number of novel or new ideas that are present so if you're doing quantum physics for the first time it will blow your working memory away but if you've got a number of years of working in the field then the intrinsic load is lower because these elements are not new so it very much depends on the base knowledge you have in this particular domain Extraneous load is that load which is noise and detracts from intrinsic. So I started today with a little bit of a ramble about the weather and still being in Singapore. That's actually extrinsic. It's not central to the point. And if I kept returning to that, or if I kept on going, um, e, uh, and I did not articulate well, or if I gave you a presentation with many, many words to read, or if I gave you a diagram with the elements of the diagram separated visually so you've got to scan between wide-ranging parts of the page to make sense or if you have a PowerPoint presentation remember those <laughs> that had lots of little transitions and bells and whistles all of these are examples of noise and they take away they subtract from the capacity of the intrinsic load now there's a third very very special component of domain in working memory that's described by cognitive load and that's what Sweller called germane. I like to refer to germane load as the piece that does the connecting, it's the generation, it's the generating bit. It's the bit that goes, ah, I get it. So when you suddenly get that insight and you see how the dots join or it all connects together, that's germane load inside working memory. So what do we do with this theory? If you're a communicator, someone who teaches, someone who coaches, uh, then I think this is a critical theory to understand. And what you want to do is to first of all remove as much noise, the stuff that distracts, the extraneous load inside the cognitive load theory, that means there's enough room left for the intrinsic work and for the generative germane load. Then we want to pitch the intrinsic load at the edge of our capability. Vygotsky talked about the zone of proximal development and we want intrinsic load to be matched so it's not too easy, not too hard. There's a Goldilocks level of effort that's involved here. So when you've got that Goldilocks level and there's not a lot of noise going on, there's room left for, I get it. Now that will change, that intrinsic load will change depending on the context and the circumstance. But this is why metaphor works well, it's why quotes work well, it's why examples work well. These are examples of how we can reduce the load to increase the ability for someone to say, ah, I get it. 
So I hope you got it and I hope that helps. Grow well.